Dr. Glidden here. Thanks for logging on this lecture. Uh, good food, bad food. Specifically uh, talking today about the problem with gluten and why that's bad from the naturopathic medical perspective. By the way, which is the only perspective that a prudent person would pay attention to when trying to get good solid information about food and nutrition and diet. Asking a medical doctor any question at all about food, nutrition, or diet is a fool's game. And that's like asking uh, an electrician, the guy that wired your house, uh, how to fix your computer. He's just the wrong person to ask. Medical doctors have no training and no clinical experience with nutrition at all, and they look down their noses at it uh, because they are completely in the dark about the absolute necessity value and effectiveness of clinical nutrition. But naturopathic physicians are trained in it. So here we go. The title of this lecture is uh, Against the Grain or Betty Crocker was not a doctor and I am going to explain to you why wheat, barley, rye, and oats are bad foods. And I know that this is counterintuitive and this is not what you have been taught but that's the whole point of this, right? We are trying to unlearn uh, the wrong stuff that we've learned over the decades. So let's start here. We can blame it all on the Egyptians. The whole grain, cultural grain thing started with the Egyptians. It's right there in the Old Testament, right? You know, the Egyptians figured out that during times of plenty, you could grow wheat and grain and store it and then use it in times of famine and drought and it was a really it was a really good thing at the time because it saves lots of lives during times of famine and drought and then of course General Mills and Betty Crocker who wasn't even a real person right uh, took that ball and ran with it and we've been suffering from it ever since now here's why it's a problem it's the problem the problem with grain specifically wheat, barley, rye, and oats is not the grain itself, it's the protein that's in the grain. And the protein that's in these grains mostly is referred to as gluten. And gluten is a very difficult protein for the human body to digest. Conservative estimates are that 60% of Caucasians and 80% of blacks have a big problem digesting the gluten protein. Okay, and here's why that happens. Now, a protein doesn't matter whether it's a fish protein or a chicken protein or a wheat, barley, rye, oat protein, a rice protein or a soy protein, doesn't matter. If it's a protein, all that it is is long chains of amino acids or amino acids that have been daisy chained together. Now, if you remember from Dr. Wallach's lectures, Amino acids are essential nutrients. There are 12 amino acids that are essential nutrients for the human body, which means they need to be imported into the body. The body cannot manufacture an essential nutrient. If a nutrient is uh, uh, categorized as essential, it has to go down the hatch every day. So we get our amino acids from protein. That's the main reason we need to eat protein. Now, Regardless of the type of protein, a protein is just a group of amino acids that have been chained together through chemical bonds. This would be the chemical bond and the individual balls in this diagram or circles would be the amino acids. Okay, So this is a very simple protein, a number of amino acids daisy chained together and it's the job of the stomach to break those chemical bonds, liberating the free amino acids. Let's look at that again. Here's a protein and we chew the protein up and swallow it, it goes into the stomach where the stomach hopefully snaps those chemical bonds liberating the amino acids which are now free and which the body can absorb readily. Now here's a picture of a simple protein. <clears throat> you can see here that the balls would be the amino acids daisy chained together in uh, a chemical structure which is either simple or quite complex. 
These are artists' renditions of electron micrographs of different proteins. This might be a fish protein and a chicken protein and an egg protein and a soy protein, etc., uh, etc. Et the take-home message here is that where the protein came from gives that protein its structure. And the structure of protein can be vastly different one from the other. And therein lies the problem. Because the chemical bond that we find in the protein of wheat, barley, rye, and oats is very difficult for the stomach to digest. Everything has to be just right in the stomach for the stomach to snap those bonds and liberate the free amino acids. Let's take a look at this. <clears throat> Here's our digestive tract. Mouth up here, salivary glands. So, you know, we put something into our mouth and our teeth start to mash it up and pound it up. And then the salivary glands excrete saliva and it starts to chemically digest the food. And then we swallow it. Food goes into the stomach where the lion's share of digestion happens. The stomach, if it's healthy, contains acid which is really really strong man it is like battery acid if you could stick a tube down your stomach if your stomach acid was healthy and strong and you took some out and dropped it on your skin it'd burn a hole right through it the pH of a healthy stomach acid is about 1.4 it's very acidic but the stomach has developed a lining that is impervious to the acid the wonders of nature right uh, so we eat food, mash it up with our teeth, swallow it, it goes into the stomach where the lion's share of digestion happens. And then the food passes from the stomach into the small intestines. And it's the small intestines where all of the absorption of our nutrients happens. And that happens through the agency of an anatomical structure called a villi. Now if you were to take the intestinal tract and cut it in half, this is what it would look like. All of these structures here are like little tentacles of an octopus, right? And they are referred to as villi. And there are millions of them. That's millions with an M. And on top of the villi, there are thousands of microvilli. A thousand million is a billion. So in somebody's intestinal tract, there are billions of tissues which are designed specifically to absorb nutrients. So it's the job of the villi to reach out, stick on to a molecule of food that you've digested and suck it in, put it into the bloodstream. This is the border. The intestinal tract is where everything gets absorbed into the bloodstream. Now once a nutrient or something gets into the bloodstream, it's inside the body. When it's in the intestinal tract, it's outside the body, which I know is counterintuitive. Uh, you think about it, if you put a grape, you know, inside your mouth on top of your tongue, technically it would be outside of the body. It's not going to be inside of the body until your body digests it and absorbs it into the bloodstream. And that happens in the intestinal tract. That is the job of the intestinal tract to absorb the nutrients that your system has digested. Okay? However, when we eat wheat, barley, rye, or oats, we get nothing but trouble because the chemical bonds of wheat, barley, rye, and oats, for some reason, and we don't know why, it just is, right? For some reason, those chemical bonds are very difficult for the stomach to break. I mean, everything has to be just right for the stomach to break these bonds and liberate the free amino acids. And again, conservative estimates are that 60% of Caucasians cannot do this, and 80% of blacks cannot do this. So this means when the majority of whites and blacks, or blacks, the majority of people, eat wheat, barley, rye, or oats, these proteins are undigested. And this is a problem. Because when you get an undigested protein 
And remember, you know, they can be very complex, right? So when you get one of these tumbling through the intestinal tract, where there should only be individual amino acids, that's like having an elephant in your living room. And that's a bad idea. That's nothing but trouble. You, you have an elephant outside the house, no problem. You know, maybe for the elephant, but not for you. But an elephant inside the house will start breaking things, and that's exactly what happens as these undigested proteins of wheat, barley, rye, and oats tumble through the intestinal tract. They destroy the villi mechanically and they also carry an electrical charge. You know, a thundercloud, the bigger that the thundercloud is, the bigger the electrical charge that it holds and the bigger the lightning that comes out of it, right? It's the same thing with an undigested protein. Because of its size and complexity, uh, a protein carries an electrical charge. And as the undigested protein tumbles through the intestinal tract, it's like a live wire. And it will also destroy the villi through uh, something akin to contact dermatitis. You know, it, it, the electrical charge destroys the villi. It gives it a little zap. Now, remember, it is the job of the villi to absorb nutrients into the body. And when you destroy the villi, you impair the mechanism that the body absorbs nutrients through, right? So common sense then would dictate that when you eat wheat, barley, rye, and oats, and those undigested proteins tumble through the intestinal tract, as they destroy the tissue in the intestinal tract, all kinds of bad things happen. You get irritable bowel, celiac disease, Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis, which all are the same disease, by the way, just different levels of tissue destruction. But all of this ultimately results in malabsorption. Because what are we doing? We're destroying the villi, which the body uses to absorb things. So... You know, if you have 100 villi on Monday and 70 on Tuesday and 50 on Wednesday and 30 on Thursday, you're going to absorb less and less and less and less. And, and this is really just common sense. And this is why these things are a problem. And now all of this leads to malabsorption, which, of course, is the genesis of most chronic disease. Dr. Wallach's research, Dr. Wallach's seminal research clearly showed beyond a shadow of a doubt that the majority of chronic disease is caused or directly affected by lack of nutrition, by malnutrition. Now, our supposition is that there's not enough nutrition in the food anyway to sustain somebody's body and make it healthy. It is impossible to nutrify the body just by eating food. You cannot do it. Now, if on top of that sad fact we're eating regularly wheat, barley, rye, and oats that are destroying the villi, we're going to be able to absorb even less nutrients than we could the week before. So the food doesn't have the nutrients that we need anyway, and now we can't absorb half of it. So this is not a good recipe. It actually is, in fact, a recipe for disaster, and it is, in fact, the genesis of most chronic disease. So our take-home message, you may be in the small percentage of people that are okay with wheat, barley, rye, or oats, but the odds are against it. So the recommendation is go on a gluten-free diet as soon as is humanly possible. Uh, you will benefit from it undoubtedly. And uh, as our clinical experience shows us, that the longer we go uh, on a gluten-free diet, the better we feel, the healthier we get, and the more our body is able to absorb things. Oh, the good news. When we stop eating wheat, barley, rye, and oats, and give the body the 91 essential nutrients appropriate for body weight every day, guess what happens? The villi grow back. And that's a good thing. Dr. Glidden with you, your steadfast advocate for help, health. <laughs> Thanks for logging on. I look forward to talking to you in the future. Stay tuned.